it's up. So this might be a long process, but uh, so in my previous video I showed you the uh, stepper mounts for those uh, LDL motors. I wanted to create like a heat sink type uh, motor mount here. Um, so I have the aluminum and I'm actually planning a strategy to machine them. And let me show what I'm thinking, at least on the first phase of just actually cutting out the stepper hole, the bore, the holes. Um, all right, so my background is not a machine either. My background is in IT. Even though I don't make a lot of IT videos, but um, I do from time to time. Um, all right, so let's see here. So I do a bore. So my thought was for the bore is I wanted to create a hole here um, to allow for chip, evacua chip evacuation in the next operation. So let's see here, bore, we'll do anything. So I'm gonna cut out a bore, hole. That's actually for the, the, the motor mount, the hole, uh, the like the aligning like part of it. Um, all right, so when I cut that out, my only concern is this thing actually might hit the bit when it goes through. So I'm, I'm hoping this little piece right here will fall through the vise. Um, but what I want is in the second operation, when I'm doing this, when I'm cutting out the actual uh, pocket, um, what it's going to do is the chips will fall through this hole. You know, it's a, instead of actually trying to, re even though I actually have coolant and we'll get a lot of the chips, I'm hoping a lot of the actual chips will come through this hole and fall out and not be recut by the cutter. So I'm going to be running a, uh, what's it, I'm going to be running a um, two-bit, um, where are we at here, bring this over here so you can see it. Tool is, uh, it's, it's a carbide two-flute. Um, add mill. It's kind of a long one. It's like 100 millimeters long. Um, and then in the third phase, I'm going to change the bit and um, I'm going to change the bit to a, a quarter or, excuse me, eight, eighth inch. I actually, I prefer like all metric med mills. It's easier to calculate for, at least for me. Um, because I design everything in metric, I like to keep everything in metric. Um, all right. Simulate. So this is just going to be uh, drilling the holes out. So the, um, why are we going so slow? And it should be, I have, I have a fast computer. This is a, I have a 3070 video card. So I don't know if that's, well, maybe because I'm recording a video at the same time. Um, so it's going to come back and do the holes for the stepper motor mount and the actual, what's it called, the pulleys. All right, why is this blocking up on me? There it goes. All right, so got to go to the CNC router. I, I mean, I, I I prefer to do aluminum on my CNC router just because the spindle's faster. It's 24,000 RPM. Plus, I actually have a coolant table. Whereas the other, like uh, the you know round column mill, is basic. I'm running mist um, and not coolant um, just because I don't have a way to contain it. Um, all right, so let's go out there and machine this. I'm going to use my probe to get the uh, zero. And uh, maybe zero in the corner here, um, just because that's the way my uh, my vice is mounted. What sucks is I can't just use the same operation for the other side, because it's actually it's not the exact same. It, it's it's actually a mirror, so I have to go back and create a whole other setup for the for the opposite side to do the exact same thing in the mirror. All right, so let's go out there and uh, get started. All right, so I forgot to film the face part of it. Uh, I don't think I even had it in the video. But yeah, I decided I forgot to face it. So I'm going to do bore one. And, alright. <coughs> I can't remember if I, I think I have coolant. I'm going to turn the coolant on. Um, main screen, start. Alright. So this should actually be doing out the uh, bore. The locating pin for the Nina 17. I have it going pretty slow. 150 millimeter. I might have to go lower. Let's see. Since I'm new to this bit, I don't really know what is a good feed and speed for this thing yet. I'm going to start out slow and kind of increase it. Start to cut down. I really got to work on that chattering. Fell through just like I thought. It's still there, it didn't break. 
I actually finished mine with them in here. So let's see if it fits. Ah, uh, I don't know if I showed you this or not, but I actually used my little probe. And that's how I got the uh, XY coordinates. So I'm just keeping the XY coordinates and I'm just going to change the bits. Yeah, it's very horrible. Yeah, I do have a lot of bits stick out, but. Well, I've had to endure a few hours of the chatter. <laughs> Brutal chatter, too. I see that fits in there. All right, cool. So I have it a little bit longer on the air sides. So it's not, it's 42 millimeter by something like 50 millimeter, I think. Uh, that way I actually have screw clearance on the air side. Um, where it mounts the 20 quarter rail. All right, time to, yeah, you can see the chatter, horrible chatter. I wonder how the bit looks. There's the first bore going in. That should be an M4 T nut for the 2020 rail right there. Oh boy. Hmm. All right, looks like op one is done. Probably took about five and a half hours, probably. Man, eh, five hours maybe. Well, I gotta figure out what's up in my, uh, I mean, I know I get, I have a clog back here, so I need to create a better drainage. Um, I mean, I have some screens there so it doesn't suck it down in the pump. I, I mean, I have multiple filters. Um, but in my last video, probably, I don't know if I uploaded it or not, but, uh, my, uh, things were good. The, um, channel covers, fillers. All right, let's uh, get this thing off here and uh, check the holes. All right, there it is. So I really need to dial in the fees and speeds for that bit because uh, my thought is I'm thinking I'm just going too aggressive on the depth. So I'm doing, like I said, one millimeter depth of cut. Um, I need to bring it down to probably 0 0.2, 0 0.5. Um, yeah, the whole thing was chatter for hours straight. Um, so I, I know it's definitely the bit because I mean I did this the, the night before I just doing a quick face with a big you know half inch you know four flute bit and it was it's perfectly smooth and clean. So all right, so I changed the bit to a six or a quarter inch, six point three five millimeter. Hear how much difference that is? I mean I, this is actually livable. I can deal with this. The other one was just brutal chatter. I mean, I try different fees and speeds, different depths, no matter what. So, I don't know. I mean, this is a car buy bit. Got this on the Amazon. I mean, maybe it's just the length. The having it stick further into, into the, uh, the spindle. Maybe create some kind of vibration like that, maybe? I don't know. Freaking brutal, though. This is, this is nice. I'm doing the channel slots, the, the, the fins. So yeah, I'm just doing a quick face. Yeah, huge difference in getting the right bit. Yeah, I'm not sure if that bit, like I said, if it's it's not balanced or something or what. Uh, this one's perfect, but the other one was just brutal. I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I actually designed this a while back. If you get on my thing over page. But it dramatically cuts down the uh, splash and chip throw, chips throw getting thrown everywhere. If you guys never saw my cooling system, it's basically uh, you know one of those like little aquarium pumps and um, a couple like blower fans back. I think I made a video about it. I can't remember if I did or not or uploaded it yet. Um, yeah, I got a radiator, like a CPU cooling radiator. Actually, it's not an aquarium. It's actually like for a computer. I'm wondering why I'm doing cooling fins. I'll come over here. Um, it's because there's more um, surface area that's touching the air. So by cutting slots out, you're actually creating more surface area that's getting air, air flow. All right, I'm done machining those things. A lot of aluminum. All right. All right, so here they are. You know, originally I thought I might chamfer these things, but I kind of like that sharp look. So, I'm not sure. Um, 
So yeah, here is, I might be shooting into the aluminum too, but deep here are the uh, pulley brackets. Where do they go? Uh, like this. Something like that. So yeah, I gotta get the pulleys on, and then the uh, there's the 2020 rail crossover, which goes like that. And then actually it's the opposite. These heat sinks go in the back. I, I can't remember if I actually, in the original design I didn't show you, so I added a couple more like little heat sink fins here in the front. And, uh, alright, I'm gonna get these things assembled. Alright, so sometimes I get, I get so busy, busy I forget uh, the film video, but here they are. Got the blocks. So, alright, so that's the blocks. I mean, super stability, super, way more stable. So I went from originally M3, um, M3 to M5, so the, the screw itself became, um, like here. So, um, originally those were M3s. So for stability wise, I put it M M fives. So way thicker, way more rigid. Um, like I said, it's like with, with on the gantry you want it to be light because you, that thing's moving around. But on the rest of the frame, it's like a CNC machine. You want it to be heavy, heavy, rigid, stable. So yeah, because if it's not rigid and stable and it's flexing and moving around, that's gonna screw up your prints if it's moving around like that. You know. You know, I thought about anodizing this black or powder coating it black, but I kind of like the. I mean, you can tell it's a billet part where it's been machined. Um, I don't know, so I might or might not change my mind. I do actually like the whole black theme going on here. But uh, I guess it would be nice to know like what parts that are billet, ones I've machined, and which ones aren't. Um, yeah, so I need to get that thing, the old, old gantry moved down, taken down here. Um, get the motors moved, and uh, I might or might not have to cut a new piece of uh, 2020 rail the center support. Alright, so before I put the motors up, got some thermal compound on them. Um, yeah, there's no sense in, you know, putting, I mean, doing all this work if you're not going to do it correctly to absorb as much heat as possible, transfer as much heat out of the motors as possible. Alright, so, alright, we'll do the test, test run here and see what happens. Um, so right now I'm running at one amp, but I want to at least start running this thing to two amps. So once I get the new drivers coming in, the uh, 21 or 5160 Pros, the external drivers, um, which are going to run at 48 volt. Um, yeah, I needed to make sure I had good coin. So let's do a test print. And maybe I'll set this up to 1 amp, 1.5 amp. And uh, do some speed tests. I'm probably going to do a 120 millimeter in my standard cube. 120 millimeters second. I still got to fix things like my um, RGB. I might have to probably bring this up because I brought this up a little bit higher. Redo, redesign my camera mount here, bringing up a couple of millimeters. Um, all right, and then I had to move this over a little bit. So originally this was over in the corner, but now I'm going to move this over here. So it's going to feed from this direction now. Um, all right, let's do a test cube. All right, doing the first print in these new blocks. Well, let me start the prints. The motors aren't warm yet, 1.5 amp. So you can see the blocks in the back, extra super heat sinks. Um, all right, let this go for a while. We'll come back and see uh, see what the temps are like. See how well the things are absorbing heat back here. All right, so I'm about halfway through the print. This little thermal piece there. Um, yeah, even at one amp before, it would already be warm by now. Because I was always concerned about like the plastic melting in the background. I, these things are, don't even—I don't feel any warmth at all. And these still f feel cold, so these are really working. Um, so, yeah, pretty good so far. Well, I'm happy about that, man. Because this, these were a headache to machine. <laughs> all right, so I think that's a success. Yeah, they're at 1.5 amp, they're not even—not even warm. So that gives me good confidence that at 2 amp, um, they're definitely going to be doing pretty good. So these are, I forgot to mention, so this, this video has gone over a week or so. Uh, these are the uh, LEO Super, Super, what are they called, Super Speeds? Uh, HTs or something again? I can't remember. Made a video about them. But they do a max of 2.8 amp, amp, so I might drive them at probably... 2.1, 2.2 would be the max I'd probably put them at. I wouldn't do full 2.8 amp. 
Um, cool, so I got some other things, other designs. I mean, I want to do quad motor with this. Right now I'm just doing two motor with Z-Tilt. Um, I'm going to use my CNC lathe back there to make a new hot end. Or I'm not sure, I'm either CNC lathe it or I'm going to use the indexer and make a new hot end. Design a high flow, high flow hot end. Um, I mean, I might start making other parts out of billet aluminum, you know, start machining other stuff. Uh, but really right now, I'm just mainly concerned about the back, the heat. So, um, I might redesign the electronics box. Because people, people aren't going to have this thing if you want to build this printer. Nobody's going to actually have this electric, electronics box. It came from the Solvo printer. So, what I might design, I might redesign everything and put all the electronics in the back here. I create a panel, but create some like DIN mounts, DIN mount of power supplies. You know, I'll have like, uh, I'll have a 48 volt for the drivers, 24 volt for the board and stuff, fans. Then I'll have a 5 volt for my, uh, which you can't see right now, my uh, RGB lighting. But a panel in the back that's nice and organized, but it'll all be 3D printed. Um, so you don't have to go out and buy a piece of plastic. Maybe, you know, four pieces together. But it'll be nice, but it'll have integrated wire management and all the spots for the Monster 8 board. Maybe you make one for a Octopus board. But nice, hidden, clean wires. And, I don't know, so I'm brainstorming about that. But Alright, guys, cool. Having fun. Alright, awesome.